Good evening, St. Albans. We are here to share a loving message, a loving message that the world is not going to give you. The media is not going to give you this message. The school system is not going to give you this message. This message is direct from the Holy Bible, God's Word, from the King James Bible, and it's the message that the churches likewise, the churches likewise are not going to give you this message, because the churches do not want you to be truly saved according to the Bible. We've just passed through the Christmas season. We all know those of us who are abiding in God's Word, that it is actually an Antichrist unholy day. Christmas has nothing to do with Jesus Christ anymore. Jesus Christ has been forgotten from the Christmas season. But we don't need to go on and on about that, folks. Those of us who want to know the truth, the truth is right in front of our eyes. We can look around and we can see that Jesus Christ was dropped from the Christmas season. The Christmas season never was about Jesus Christ. The Christmas season is a pagan holiday through and through. And I thank my loving God that the Christmas quote-unquote season is behind us. Now we can get back to sharing the gospel without having these discussions about the Antichrist nature of the Christmas unholy day. Now we can focus on just sharing the good, the good news, the loving message of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came into this world, ladies and gentlemen, to solve a problem. That problem that he came to solve is that we are dead in our sins. We live in a fallen world. Every single one of us lives in a fallen world. And there's only one way to God the Father, and that is through Jesus Christ. That is the good news. Without Jesus Christ, our one and only Savior, we are condemned in our sins already today. John chapter 3 verse 18 tells us that exactly. If we are not in Christ, we are condemned already. We're condemned in our sins. That means we're going to hell unless we come to Christ. That's not a popular message because we don't want to acknowledge our sin. We don't want to acknowledge that we are transgressing God's law on a day in and day out basis. We don't want to acknowledge God's presence even though He created us. Even though God created us, He gave us this miraculous body. He gave us this miraculous existence. But we don't want to acknowledge God because then we have to do something about it. We have to start changing our ways. God is calling us all to repentance. God wants us all to be saved. He says that He... he wish that none should perish. The Lord would that none perish, that we all come to repentance. Unless we know that we are living in a fallen world, unless we know that we are condemned in our sins, there's no reason to be interested in the good news. It's only when we understand the bad news that the good news makes sense. And the bad news is that we're going to hell. There's only two choices. The Bible tells us when we pass in this world, the judgment comes. We're all going to be judged whether we believe or whether we mock. Whether we believe or whether we mock, we will be judged. On judgment day, God is going to ask you. He's going to already understand. He's going to check the book of life. If your name has been blotted out of the book of life, you've got no chance. Your destiny for the, the rest of eternity is already settled. People in 2020 don't want to hear this message because we know that we're condemned in our sins. And yet we don't want to receive 
God's free gift. God is a loving God. God wants us all to be saved. He would that all of us come to repentance. He would that all of us come to repentance. He wants us to come to Him. He's calling us back home. Ladies and gentlemen, He is calling us back home. But we have to make that decision. Do we want to be with the Father? Do we want to be with the Father or would we rather just go our own way and be condemned in our sins to an eternity of torment in hell? People don't believe this anymore because they're so divorced from the Word of God. We're so plugged into the media. We're full of distraction. We're living life. We're broken, but we don't know what the answer is. We're broken and we reach for antidepressant medication. We're broken and we go to the pub and we try to drown our sorrows. We're broken so we go to nightclubs and we try to forget our brokenness by having a good time. We're entertaining ourselves to death, but we don't want the one and only answer that is ever going to give us true satisfaction. And that is Jesus Christ. We're not talking about the Church of England. We're not talking about the Christian religion. We're talking about salvation. Salvation through Jesus Christ is completely other than religion. He wants to have a personal relationship with each and every one of us. We are just a, a breath away, a simple confession away from having all of our sins blotted out, all of our sins forgiven, but we have to come to Him first. And we can only do that in this lifetime. If we pass from this world today, if we're hit by a bus going down the street, and we did not confess the Lord Jesus Christ, then we are condemned to an eternity in hell. There's nothing that can be done. You will end up, our souls live on, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter if you believe this. It doesn't matter if you mock it. It doesn't matter, but when you die, there will be a judgment that comes upon every single one of us. The only thing that matters is whether we came to Jesus Christ in truth, in faith, and we had all of our sins washed away. Because nothing else matters but that. We cannot work our way to heaven. It doesn't matter how many good deeds we have done, how many old ladies we've helped walk across the street. If we have not come in truth to Jesus Christ, we are going to spend the rest of eternity tormented in hell. That is the clear. If you read the Bible, it's very, very clear. The problem is, is we don't read the Bible anymore. We, we can check every single word that I am saying here today. You don't have to trust what I say. I don't want you to trust that I'm giving you the truth. Mankind lies to us. The news media lies to us. The education system lies to us. Our teachers at school lie to us because they have been lied to. But we're trying to give you the truth, not because it's my truth, not because it's my wife's truth, but because it's the truth of the Holy Bible that you can confirm for yourself by picking it up and reading in it, reading it, abiding in it. Check out everything that I say. You'll find that I'm telling you the truth. The truth that the church isn't going to give you. It didn't give it to me when I was confirmed at the Anglican Church. The Anglican Church is not giving the Gospel. That's why nobody pays attention to the Anglican Church. It's dead. The Anglican Church is dead. The Catholic Church is dead. These are not Christian churches. These are Antichrist churches. They are spewing lies, just like the media. 
just like the politicians, just like your teachers, just like the university system. You're they blessed. exist to give lies, to indoctrinate us. But we can get the truth, ladies and gentlemen, if we open up the Bible, if we begin to read and abide in God's Word, everything that I'm saying here today, you can confirm for yourself. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure there are some intelligent people amongst us tonight. What did I just say? How do we get everlasting life? What must we do to be saved? Can anybody answer that question for me? Because you're going to find yourself before God the Father. And if you are not prepared for that judgment, if you have not come to Jesus Christ in faith, then you will spend an eternity in hell. God cannot lie. He has told us exactly what is at stake. That's why some of us, a growing number of us, are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because we care about you. We care about your soul. God loves you. God loves all of us. But He's not happy with the wicked. The Bible tells us God is angry with the wicked every day. God is angry with the wicked every day. We can walk by and smile. We can mock the very notion, but it doesn't change anything. Parents, begin to raise up your kids according to God's Word. Protect them. Give them the free gift of everlasting life that God is offering every single one of us. God is offering every single one of us the free gift of eternal life, but we walk past and we pay no attention or we mock the idea. The Bible tells us in these last days, mockers and scoffers will come. They will continue to mock and scoff because they're walking after the filth of their own flesh. The Bible tells us we are all, every single one of us, without excuse. We're without excuse, ladies and gentlemen, because God's handiwork is apparent in everything all around us. We all know that God exists. We know that He is true, but we have hardened our hearts. We've hardened our minds, and we just mock about it. We mock and we scoff, but we know in our heart of hearts that we have a Creator. Every single one of us, we've got a bicycle right here. Let me ask you, ladies and gentlemen, did somebody design this bicycle or did it just come into existence? Did it come into existence by chance? Did the reflectors come together and find themselves onto spokes? Did the chain just come together by happenstance or was there a designer? Was there an intelligent designer who designed that mountain bike right there? What about a book? What about an author that writes a book? Does the book just come into existence on its own? Or do we need a typographer? Do we need a publisher? A designer? Does somebody have to design the, the cover that goes on the book? make decisions about the typeface that's being used to print the page? Do people have to make decisions about how the words are arranged on the page? Can a book just come together by itself, ladies and gentlemen? Can a book come together by itself? Or does it require that a designer designed the book? Does it require that an author wrote the book? How much more so this world, we are, each one of us, our bodies are miracles. We eat food and our body processes that food without any thought of our own. Amen. 
we go to bed, we sleep, but our heart continues to beat. We continue to breathe. Our body is digesting food. When we're asleep, we are walking miracles. Science cannot wrap their head around but a tiny fraction of what happens in our bodies. Biologists have no idea how this body operates. We all know that if a book exists or a baby carriage exists, that there was a designer that designed that baby carriage or a book or a bicycle. But we scoff and we mock at the idea that the whole of this world just came together by chance. That's rubbish, ladies and gentlemen. You have been told a lie, and you've been told it so often, for so long, that you believe it. It's philosophically absurd. I have two master's degrees in philosophy and classics. The philosophical idea that all this world came together by chance is philosophically absurd. And yet I believed that very thing. For three and a half decades, I rejected the God of the Bible. Three and a half decades, had I been killed in a car accident, had I died of disease, I would be tormented in hell right now for an eternity. Had I died in my sins, I would have been condemned. For 35 years, I was an ardent atheist. I rejected God until I picked up the Bible and read it in faith. And then you realize the more that you abide in it, that it's the only source of truth. The Bible is literally true. The churches are wicked. The churches lie to us. But the Bible is the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, God is calling you to repentance today. All that is required is to believe on Jesus Christ. Call out to Him. Go home. Go into your bedroom and call out to Jesus Christ. Ask Him if He is real. Call out to Jesus Christ and say, Dear Lord, show me your love. Show me that you are real. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. And our loving God is gracious and full of mercy and love. He will forgive your sins, but you have to call out to Him. If you don't call out to Him, you will not have your sins forgiven. You will be, as John 3.18 tells us, condemned already. We are either alive in Christ or we are dead already. We know that the Bible tells us only a few, a relative few, shall come to Jesus Christ. Narrow is the way that leads to the truth, to Jesus Christ. But broad is the way that leads to destruction. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want you to be led into destruction. This world wants to destroy you. The news media, your teachers, the university system have been lying to us for generations. They do not want you to know the truth of Jesus Christ. Call out to Jesus today. Ask Him to forgive you your sins. In that very moment, you will be given God's free gift of eternal life. In that very moment, God will forgive you your sins. All of your sins will be washed clean. You can know with certainty the moment that you believe in Jesus Christ, when you confess Jesus is Lord, believing in your heart that God hath raised Him from the dead. The moment that you do that, your sins are washed away forever. But only a few of you are going to do it. The Bible tells us most will not. Most will continue to be the walking dead. Here's the other thing, ladies and gentlemen. Without Christ, we have no spiritual discernment. 
King Solomon, who is the wisest person on earth. King, Amen, sister, thank you. King Solomon was the wisest man who ever lived. He went off the rails for much of his adulthood. He did exactly what the Bible says not to do. He started fornicating with strange women. His whole life went down the tubes. And yet, at the end of his lifetime, at the end of his lifetime, he came to his senses and he actually realized that the beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. He used to know that. Go back home. He used, he used go home. You go home, sir. He used to know. He used I'm a British citizen, thank you very much. But I am a citizen of Jesus Christ. I have been given the authority to preach the gospel whether you like it or not. King Solomon realized at the end of his life that the wisdom that he had acquired as a young man, understanding that God's word is true, he finally returned to that after spending a lifetime in sin, in egregious sin. He realized that the Bible is true. The word of God is true. He realized that the all that mattered is to fear the Lord and to walk according to his ways. We don't have to spend a lifetime in sin, ladies and gentlemen. We can come to Jesus Christ today. All we have to do is call upon him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, that means every single one of us, ladies and gentlemen, it is a choice that we must make. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Muhammad cannot offer you everlasting life. Muhammad himself is dead. The Buddha cannot offer you everlasting life. The Buddha is dead. There is only one way that we can attain to everlasting life, and it's through Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me, Jesus Christ. No other way is going to work. God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, who is manifest in the flesh. He sent Him here to pay for all of our sins through that terrible death that He went through on the cross. Jesus Christ came into this world knowing what was going to happen. He willingly laid down His life. He willingly went to the cross so that we could live. And yet we mock Him. Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price. He was the ultimate sacrifice, the blameless Lamb of God, and yet we mock Him. He went to the cross, died a torturous death, nailed to the cross, so that we can live, and yet we mock Him. How shameful it is of us to mock our Lord and Savior. How shameful it is for us to mock the one person who could save us from our sins, who was both God and man. Jesus Christ was fully God and fully man. He came and lived a perfect life. He never sinned. Unlike us, the Bible tells us, there is none righteous, for we have all, we all come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. That means we're all sinners, ladies and gentlemen. But Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us, never committed a sin. He was the blameless Lamb that God required in order to be a propitiation for our sins. He came to offer Himself as the perfect sacrifice, but we must make that decision. Are we happy to go to 
hell for an eternity? Or are we willing to humble ourselves and to come to Christ in faith? We don't need the church. We don't need a priest. We can come to Jesus Christ in simplicity and in truth. We can come to Christ in simplicity and in truth. The book of Romans tells us all we have to do is confess the Lord Jesus Christ, believing in our hearts that God hath raised him from the dead. The moment we do that in sincerity, our sins are washed away. In that very moment, we are given the free gift of eternal life. In that very second, we are given the Holy Spirit to indwell within us. It is only at that moment that we have spiritual discernment. Otherwise, we are the walking dead. And we can see that everywhere around us. People are like, um, you know, just the walking dead. Walking around without a care. They don't care that they're on their way to hell. They don't care that the Bible tells us we're condemned in our sins already if we are not in Christ. God is offering the most amazing free gift, and yet we walk on past. We care more about the 50% sale at Clinton's selling a bunch of Chinese crap than we do about our own souls. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. We care more about the 50% sale than we do about our eternal souls. The people at Clinton's don't want to hear that message. Many of you don't want to hear that message. But we are here to give you that good news, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus Christ died for our sins so that we don't have to pay the cost. What? We don't have to pay the cost. Some of us will pay the cost, however, because we are mockers and scoffers of God's Word. We will find ourselves sitting before, the, before God the Father, before His throne, being judged and we will have nothing to say nothing that we say is going to matter if we are not in christ there's nothing that we can say before god we will be condemned god is a righteous god he's a loving god and for that reason he cannot let sinners into his world he is not going to let sinners and the Bible tells us we're all sinners, He will not let you into His kingdom. There's only one way that you can enter into His kingdom, and that is through faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the blameless Lamb, who came and sacrificed Himself so that we could live. If we don't make that decision, we are already condemned. We will spend an eternity in hell if we don't come to Christ. The church is not going to give you this message because the church would rather you be condemned in your sins. The church leadership is comprised of a bunch of antichrists, just like the Catholic Church, just like the Lutheran Church, just like the Presbyterian Church. These established churches exist to condemn you to hell. They don't want you to know the truth that is available for anybody who knows how to read. The question is, how many of you know how to read? How many folks care about their eternal condition? How many people care about where their soul is going to go to tonight? We are not in control as to how long, how many days, how many hours we have left in this world. The Bible tells us it's appointed unto all men to die. But then, the judgment. It is the judgment, ladies and gentlemen, which brings us here on a Friday evening to share the gospel with you. Because we care about you. The judgment is going to come no matter whether you believe disbelieve or mock. 
the judgment is still going to come. So this is the most pressing question that we can ever consider. Are we going to choose death? Are we going to choose eternal perdition in hell? Or are we going to choose life in Jesus Christ? That is the most pressing question that any of us have to answer. Because it doesn't matter what we do in this lifetime. It doesn't matter how many riches we acquire. It doesn't matter how many iPhones we have. It doesn't matter how big our house is. It doesn't even matter whether we believe in God, because God exists. When the judgment comes, if we are not in Christ, we're condemned in our sins. Read John 3.18, ladies and gentlemen. Pick up a Bible and read just one verse and tell me, am I speaking the truth or have I made this up? While you're at it, read John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's up to you, ladies and gentlemen. We can preach the Gospel. We can pour out our love upon you. But there is nothing that is going to change unless you call upon Jesus Christ. That is a decision that you have to make for yourself. Are you going to call upon the Lord today? Today is the day of salvation. Or are you going to harden your heart? Are you going to continue to live a broken life? Are you going to continue to seek solace and entertainment in video games, in movies, in the television, through antidepressant medication, through alcohol, through skunkweed, through psychedelics, through shopping at Marks and Spencer's. We're all broken, ladies and gentlemen, without Jesus Christ. We might not know it, but the more we mock that idea, the more your brokenness is showing through. The more we mock the idea of Jesus Christ, the more hardened our hearts become. The more we push God away, the more we are going to be broken. But we don't have to be broken, ladies and gentlemen. That's why it's called the good news. That's why it's called the good news, because we can, instead of walking around like zombies, Instead of walking around like broken zombies, we can actually call upon the Lord. And in that very moment, our loving and merciful God will reach down and save us. All we have to do is call upon Him, believing in our heart that God hath raised Him from the dead. Jesus Christ came to this world, offered Himself as a sacrifice, was literally nailed to the cross so that we can live. Ultimately, it's your decision, ladies and gentlemen, but I pray that we have, by way of preaching the gospel this evening here, I pray that many seeds have been sown. I pray that many seeds have been sown into good hearts. I pray that those seeds grow up. I pray that some of you begin to abide in God's Word. I pray that you'll pick up the King James Bible today. I pray that you'll download the King James Bible onto your smartphone today. There's no excuse in 2020. We can download the King James Bible for free. We can begin to abide in God's Word. We don't have to take this crazy person you know, my every utterance. We don't have to believe it. We can check it. We can confirm these things in the Bible. We can confirm whether this is true or whether I am making it up. But we have to make a decision. 
Are we going to pick up God's Word? Are we going to take God's Word seriously? Or are we going to walk on like zombies, broken in this world? Seeking solace in a million and one distractions. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I pray that St. Albans comes to Jesus Christ on Mass. I pray that you all begin to pick up your Bible. I pray that you begin to read the book of John. Just read the book of John, ladies and gentlemen. It's an easy book to read. You'll begin to realize who Jesus Christ is. The book of John makes it so clear why we need a Savior. The book of John tells us that God, Jesus Christ, was God manifest in the flesh. The very first verse of the very first chapter, John 1.1, 1, 1, tells us that the Word, another name for Jesus Christ, is He was with the Father at the time of creation. Jesus Christ made all things in this world. Read John chapter 1, verse 1. Check to see whether these things are so. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you for hearing us. We pray in Jesus Christ's mighty name that St. Albans begins to crack open their Bibles and to begin to abide in God's Word. We pray that people in St. Albans actually pay attention to the Gospel message. We pray that you individually make a decision to save your souls from the eternal hell that is coming when you pass from this world. And in Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen.